Welcome to another edition of MCAT Strategy. Today we will be doing strategies for the Roman numeral question type, also known as multiple multiples. The Roman numeral questions are definitely one of the most challenging types of questions that you will receive, and that's why it is important to practice your technique when approaching these questions in order to help you get past these tough questions. In an earlier video, one of the strategies that I presented that I really like personally is doing the easier questions of the passage first. And if you are following this strategy, then Roman numeral questions should be left to the end when you have taken care of all the easy questions first. Roman numeral questions are the easiest to recognize and they can be recognized with a quick visual glance. You will see distinctive formatting. You will see the Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3 and that is where they get their namesake. You will see three statements that you will need to evaluate and uh, you will see a distinctive answer choice format which uh, you will see in the next following slides. So it is very easy to recognize and if you see this type of question, you should have a specific type of approach to it. To begin, read the question and then read all three statements. After you have read all three statements, you need to start with what you know. When evaluating the statements, often you will be sure of one statement or maybe two if you're lucky, but most of, most of the time you will be sure of one statement and that, is your, that will be your starting point. So to start, start with the statement that you are most confident with, whether it is wrong or right. Make sure you are confident in where you begin, because if you make a mistake at this step, then you will get the question wrong. Uh, one tip is to write down the three numerals on your scratch paper and cross them out or place a check mark uh, if they are applicable accordingly. If you are sure a statement is incorrect, cross out all of the answer choices that contain that statement. So it, in this first example, we are sure that statement 2 is incorrect. So we cross out uh, answer choices B and C. That leaves us with only answer choices A and D that are left. And if we compare the two, we, know, we now know that statement 1 is correct. We know that statement 1 is correct because out of the two remaining answer choices, one statement 1 is common to both of them. Since we know that statement 1 is correct and it will not help us to choose between answer choices A and D, we skip over it and focus on statement 3. That just allows us to skip a step and not have to evaluate all three and it allows us to focus our attention on what's important. If you are sure that a statement is correct, cross out all of the answer choices that do not contain that statement. So here, let's say we are confident that statement 1 is correct, then that would be our starting point. And we would cross out answer choices B and C because they don't contain statement 1. Now if we look at the remaining answer choices A and D, we see that uh, statement 2 is not included, so it must be incorrect. So since we know that 2 is incorrect and evaluating two, statement 2 will not help us to choose between A and D, we skip over it and all that is left again to evaluate is statement 3. Different questions, depending on how the answer choices are set up, will give you different types of information. So let's look at this example. Say our starting point is statement 3, and we are sure that it is correct. Then we follow the same step. We cross out the, we cross out the answer choices that do not contain statement 3. So that leaves us with answer choices C and D. However, we must still evaluate uh, statements 1 and 2 and decide which one is correct. But we ha now we have more information because we know that only one is correct and that one has to be correct. So we choose the better between the two. 
besides choosing a starting point and then eliminating answer choices and then looking at what is left to give us more information, there are some logical reasoning strategies that can be employed. However, again, they rely on your initial decision about the first statement that you are confident in, whether it is right or wrong. So make sure that uh, your st the statement you choose to start with, uh, you are confident is correct in what you think. Let's go back to example one, where our starting point was uh, think, no, being confident that statement two is incorrect. So following the steps, we crossed out answer choices B and C, and through deduction, we know that statement one must be correct. The next step is to compare statements one and three. One scenario is that statement one and three are opposite ideas, so that if one is true, then three cannot be true. In that case, we already know that statement 1 is true, and therefore statement 3 cannot be true, so we choose A. Another second scenario is that when we compare statement 1 and 3, we decide that they are linked ideas. That is, if 1 is true, then 3 must also be true as well. In that case, we already know that 1 is true, and therefore 3 has to be true as well. So we, in that case, we choose answer choice D. Here we will revisit example two where our starting point was that we are sure that statement one is correct. Since statement one is, we feel that it is correct, we cross out answer choices B and C. And through deduction, we deduce that statement two must be incorrect. Now let's compare statements two and three. Let's say we decide that statement 2 and 3 are linked ideas. That is, if 2 is true, then 3 must be true as well. But through deduction, we know already that statement 2 is wrong, and therefore 3 must be wrong as well, since they are linked ideas. So in this case, we choose answer choice A. The strategies might seem a little bit confusing at first, so try listening to the video again and work through the examples for yourself on paper and you will see the logic behind this kind of reasoning. And you will see that with your starting point and picking up the correct starting point will give you a lot more information about the rest of the statements and will allow you to use deductive reasoning to make an educated answer for this type of question. The last piece of advice I can give you is to pull the trigger. Once you have chosen a choice, pick it and move on. Roman numeral questions are particularly bad at draining your time as you debate between whether you should choose 1 or 1 and 3 and so forth. So if you catch yourself getting stuck, force yourself to pull the trigger, pick an answer and then move on. Make sure you do not fall in the trap of spending too much time on this type of question because this type of question can really trap you. One other thing I'd like to say is that these strategies for Roman numeral questions or multiple multiple questions can be used for your future exams. In my university career, career in multiple choice exams, I ran into a lot of these types of questions. So being, uh, being good at this type of question and the deductions that can help you arrive at the correct answer is useful for both the MCAT and your future academic studies. To incorporate this strategy, practice slowly, consciously at first, you know, take it step by step and talk yourself through. And then with practice, it will come automatically and you will be able to increase your speed and accuracy for this type of question. Any suggestions, comments, or discussion is welcomed. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, keep on practicing. This is MCAT Strategy, logging off.